Welcome back to the fifth episode of Previews and Predictions here on the Say What You Like Sports Podcast. We are kicking off the predictions for the NFC, starting with the NFC North. We're going to go shotgun style, try to bring this to you fast and furious, and just generally give our thoughts on how we see things playing out in 2019 for the NFC North. So first and foremost, the team that we want to talk about is the Chicago Bears. What are your thoughts on the Bears? What's the good? What's the bad? So, you know, we got the defending NFC North champ, Chicago Bears, and we still have Matt Nagy, but the loss of, uh, you know, Vic Fangio is going to hurt them. You know, Vic Fangio taking a head coaching job with the Denver Broncos, and he's replaced with Chuck Pagano, who I just, man, I don't know. I mean, I think he'll be a good defensive coordinator, but you talk across the league to the top offensive minds, the Doug Petersons, the Shanahans, the McVeighs of the world, they talk about how Vic Fangio's, one of the hardest defensive coordinators to scheme against because of his, you know, his ability to, you know, put his defensive players in the right position. You bring in Chuck Pagano. I mean, it's a drop off. They really couldn't do much in the draft. You know, Khalil Mack right. know, cost them a first and a second round pick. But it was worth it. Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm not saying it's not, but there's not much to talk about adding on this. Offseason. Right. And when I was talking about the team earlier, I was saying, you know, what this defense, I predict to take a, a bit of a step back. That's not to say that I don't think this defense can't be productive or even a top 10 defense in this league. I think that from top to bottom, they're stacked. Plenty of talent, a lot of B-plus players. And then you got Khalil Mack, who's an A-plus talent. Yeah. So to me, look, without with or without Fangio, the talent is there. Yeah, I do think they're not going to be quite as sharp, not quite on top of their game like they were in 2018. But to me, the real question is on the other side of the ball – what kind of steps is Trubisky going to make to continue to improve, uh, especially with Nagy in his ear? How are they going to continue to develop? How's that relationship going to continue to develop? I think that's the real card because we know this defense is going to win you some games, but how many games is the offense going to win for the Chicago Bears? That's my question mark. Yeah, that's true. Legitimately. So, you know, the other team that we want to talk about next is the Detroit Lions. What's good? What's bad? Well, you know, you have Matt Patricia who came over from New England another year with him. And you look at what they did adding, you know, Trey Flowers in the, and, excuse me, in free agency, tied in Jesse James from the Steelers and Danny Amendola. So you look at every disciple of Balachek has tried to build a New England style in wherever area they are. So you've had when McDaniels in Denver, you've had Patriots West, you know, you have uh, Brian Flores in the South. Patriots South, you have here Patriots Midwest, you know, and they're trying to build it similar. You know, when you bring in Trey Flowers, you're trying to be able to build a kind of defense that's multiple, that can change fronts. You know, you're going to play a lot of man. They drafted TJ Hawkinson, who will be their version of Gronk, and try to give Matt Stafford kind of a new weapon that he can get through down the middle. So I just look at this team as, you know, they've added some pieces, and you just kind of hope that defensively they can – they can kind of build and be a mini New England with Patricia kind of leading the way. Yeah, uh, you know what? I'm I'm a real big fan of Matt Stafford, always have been. You know, I've talked about the arm. I've talked about his ability to, to, you know, compete when the going gets tough in the fourth quarter. I think Matt Stafford is a clutch quarterback. I just believe this team really hasn't been consistent around him. You know, some years they've had terrible running games. Sometimes they've had terrible weapons. You know, uh, he did have Calvin Johnson for many a year. But outside of that, who did he have? He never really had a running game. The defense was good. I talked about in uh, 20, what was it, 2014 when they had Sue and all those guys, you know, and they made the playoffs. But outside of that, it's inconsistent. So to me, I I look at Patricia and and he's going to try to, you know, take his teachings from Belichick and imply that kind of system. But to me, that's easier said than done. I don't have a lot of faith that that's going to get done in 2019. And pretty much that's the only reason that I'm picking. I'm going to end up just saying it now. I think I'm picking the Detroit Lions to finish last. I don't see this team as competitive as the other three in this division. Yeah, no, I agree with you when it comes to Detroit because, and you know what's funny is we've talked about is they're probably the best fourth place team in the yeah, NFL. Yeah, I'd agree. They had a little tournament of fourth place teams. I think they have this enough. This team's good. It's good. There's enough. It's just that the gap between them and, and the ones, the other three teams is pretty big, you know. So I kind of do having them finishing fourth as well. So who do you have finishing second? Finishing second, I have the Green Bay Packers. And I look at, you know, new head coach Matt LaFleur, and I think that's going to be what is causing me or what I feel like 
why they finish um, second in the division. I mean, you have Mike Penn running the defense, and I love what they've done in the last two years, kind of adding depth and adding talent to the defense with you know the draft from before, uh, two years ago with Jair Alexander, the defensive back out of Louisville, and now you get Zedaria Smith, Adrian Amos, Preston Smith in free agency, and you couple that with Rashawn Gary, Darnell Savage in the draft. You're really trying to make Aaron Rodgers feel like he doesn't have to get ridiculous and put himself in harm's way and put the ball in harm's way because he has a solid defense for once. That's right. the goal you can tell that they're trying for in this year. Right. They want Aaron Rodgers not to have to feel like he has to win each and every game, all 16 games for this team, which, yeah. let's be honest, a couple of years ago he was having to do that. Yeah. Um. I really need to see more from some of these young defensive guys before I say, hey, Green Bay is the team to beat in the NFC North. Bottom line is I, I still think that, you know, Aaron Rodgers is the end-all, be-all for the Packers, I think, still going into 2019. I'm not, that's not to say that I don't see the improvements that they're making. I just don't believe that it's enough at this point. And I think it's a big question mark, you know, Say what you will about McCarthy, but he's a Super Bowl winning quarterback. Of, I mean, Super Bowl winning coach. And of course, the team is going to pick the Super Bowl winning quarterback over the coach. But to me, a big part is going to be that respect factor. And I do believe there's going to be a honeymoon period. I think the offense is going to definitely look better. But how soon can that defense step up? And that's the way I'm looking at it. And when I look at a team like the Minnesota Vikings, I see a defense that is ready to be top-notch in 2019 as opposed to the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, you know, when I look at the Minnesota Vikings, and the one thing that I know right off the bat is they're probably the most complete team. They have the most talent top to bottom on their roster and the rest of the division. On both sides on of the both ball, sides. I, mean, I would you have, say. Uh, Kevin Stefanski and Gary Kubiak, who's going to be running the offense, and you're going to see a lot of what Denver goes to, that wide zone, outside zone, bootlegs, tossing it to the back. You know, and I think that's going to help Kirk Cousins because, you know, you have him, you have these receivers, you have Dalvin Cook in the running back, you know, and you have this defense. So I look at this team from top to bottom and I go, this team should win this division. I think that the Bears are going to take a step back. They're this year's Jacksonville Jaguars. And I look at, you know, Green Bay, is, it may take them a year for that offense to click for Aaron Rodgers to finally kind of let go of having to do everything. There's going to be growing pains with Aaron Rodgers. And I think that this is the window and the pressure's on. This is make or break for the Minnesota Vikings, for Zimmer and for Cousins. Right. I, I agree. You know, and I, I do like Zimmer. I've talked about Zimmer before as being a former Cowboys defensive coordinator who's, again, held in high regard. And, you know, I do like Kirk Cousins. I know he doesn't always perform in the clutch, but he puts the numbers up. I was talking about him having, you know, 4,000 yards last season, which he did. It's just you know, what do those numbers amount to at the end of the day? They have to amount to wins, and they didn't. So, look, I think the Minnesota Vikings are going to be, like you said, they're a complete team on both sides of the ball. I expect them to improve and bounce back. But in the end, they just don't have Aaron Rodgers. And for as much crap as I give the Green Bay Packers team around him, still Aaron Rodgers. And if I, which I do, I expect Aaron Rodgers to play 16 games, then I think, the Packers are going to take this division, and I slightly favor Green Bay over Minnesota. So how do you have it ranked out again? So, look, I, 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 would, I would probably have it where it's definitely going to be Detroit in fourth. And, again, they're a solid fourth. Um, then I would probably end up saying, the, again, these three are neck and neck. I could see – I will say this first. Before anybody gets pissed off and, and, at these predictions, and I think this goes for the both of us, these three teams, I would not be surprised if any one of them finishes in first, yeah, in first place. I agree. I, I'm going to say that. Um, I'm going to pick the Bears to finish third just because I don't believe in Trubisky at this point. He still has something to show me. That's not to say that it can't happen. It's just not what I think is likely. I do think the Vikings overall are the best team talent-wise, but they, that, that pick bit me in the ass so hard last year. Yeah. It's just hard to be on board. And look, talent is talent. Aaron Rodgers is the most talented player at the most important position. And now he actually has a head coach that he's going to semi-respect. So I got to go with them as the favorite. I'm going to pick Green Bay 1. All right. Yeah, I mean, I think we, we're similar as far as 4-3. Uh, and three. I, I have Detroit, and I mean, Detroit has a lot of great talent. It's just you're just not sure if they can put it together. 
You have, you know, the Bears, who I just think are going to be this year's Jacksonville Jaguars, a great defense who's going to be hard to replicate the amount of turnovers and pressures. And you have, you know, Trubisky, who's still, in my mind, Blake Bortles. He has to get out of that. Now he has that's, negative. That's rough, dude. I think that's a little rough. Remember Blake so Bortles is pretty, pretty bad. Yeah, but you got to remember, there was a stretch, uh, not last year, but the year before, when they made it to the AFC Championship, where Blake Bortles was playing really good. They, he was actually playing well. There was a stretch of the last five games. It's the same thing with Trubisky. You know, we look at Trubisky and we see potential, but at the same time, I need to see a game in and game out from him. He needs to be a guy that once in a while can can lead them down the field and win the game. He did right. it once in the playoffs, but I need to see it 16 games, you know. And then I look at, you know, number two is is the Green Bay Packers. And, and real quickly, just, you know, I think it's going to take them a while. I think that it, it's going to be hard for Aaron Rodgers to not want to be Aaron Rodgers. And he's going to have to learn in a similar sense of a John Elway it's okay not to have to kill yourself to try to win. We've built a team around you to where you can do this right. magic, but we can save it. And then number one, I, because I think of the pressures on them, pressures on Zimmer, pressures on Cousins, this is a window where the Bears take a step back, where the Packers are a year away, where I think Minnesota can win this division because they're the most talented roster. Their coach is always given, like you've said before, Aaron Rodgers trouble, and I think they do enough to win this division. But like you said, the NFC stacked, and especially this division. No disagreements there.